Hi, this is Bond1 from the Game Creator Forums. I'm here today to do a tutorial on a new shader I'm giving away for free um, that does texture animation on top of your models. Um, if you have the Metro Theater model pack, which I made, you'll know there's lots of um, animated effects in that, and that's all done with a shader. So I'm releasing a customized new shader that you can use to uh, do th this type of animation on top of your models. So let me pop over here to Max. I'm also going to give away two television models here to showcase the effect. What I'm going to do is use the shader to display an animation on the television screen. Okay. I'll pop on over to uh, Dark Shader here and show you what the uh, final effect, what we're trying to achieve. Now this shader I'm releasing is called Diffuse Sprite Atlas Template. And what the shader will do is display a sprite animation on top of a model or a portion of a model. So let's, uh, I've loaded the shader into dark shader. Let me load in this television model. Let me turn the grid off. You'll see it's black right now because I haven't assigned it textures yet. This is that old TV. This shader uses two textures, really easy. It uses a diffuse texture a D texture and a sprite texture, which is an I texture. So let's load in the diffuse texture. You'll see that there we go, there we have our TV. And what I'm going to do is display a, a animation of like static snow, like a no signal on a TV. So let's go over here, load in this uh, static animation, and there we go. That's the final effect we're achieving. Really, really cool. That would look really cool in a game. You see you got the TV with the animation on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how this shader works and how you can customize it for your own use in your own games. So let's pop on over here to Photoshop and I'll show you the textures. The first texture is just simply the diffuse texture. This is the television texture. You'll see here's the UV layout. And what this shader does is it dis uses two textures, the diffuse texture and the sprite animation texture. Now you'll see here, here is the zoomed in, the TV sprite texture animation. It's arranged in a 4x4 four four grid for this particular animation. uses 16 frames and uh, it'll play on top of just the television screen like you see here. Now the shader works by chopping up your existing UV layout into any number of rows and columns to use as a sprite texture. Which you'll see here, let me overlay a grid. Each one of these frames corresponds to this UV layout. So you see you have four UVs, um, grids in one direction, the horizontal and the vertical direction. Now it displays a sprite animation by, you see the sp snow animation only covers the portion where the screen is. Everything else is black. That masks out the animation on the uh, other portion of the model. So it only displays on the screen and not everywhere. Okay, now let's go over here to Dark Shader. Let me explain what these uh, values do. I've exposed all these useful values as uh, user interface sliders in Dark Shader. So you can edit this animation however you want. You have full control over how it works. So this first value is Sprite Rows. You'll see I have it set to 4, Sprite Columns 4, because it uses 16 frames of animation, 4 vertical and four horizontal. You'll see the next thing here is uh, frames per second. You also have full control over how fast this animation plays. For default, I'm just doing 15 frames per second, but it can be anything you want. Uh, I could slow it way down to two frames per second, and you'll see the animation plays really slow. But for this particular one, 15 works well. Um, this next value here, loop time, you won't have to touch that that 
much. Um, you can just leave it at the default value of 100 is, is good for it. What this does is this shader makes use of a, a value of time to animate the texture. Uh, it uses a timer. Um, what happens, what this loop time does is it's set to 100. Every 100 seconds it resets a timer. If that didn't happen, the time value would just get larger and larger and larger and that can lead to artifacts in the animation. So it, it needs to reset itself. Um, I have it set to reset itself every 100 seconds. So uh, that's a good value. You can leave it at that um, without uh, any problems at all. You won't have to touch this. But um, just one other word, this timer is not the same as uh, Entity Timer in uh, FPS Creator. This is totally shader based. This is, works on your graphics card. So it has nothing to do with FPS Creator. But um, anyway, enough of that. You can just know that you won't have to touch loop time that much. You can just leave it at 100. That'll work fine f for any animation. These last two values, you don't have to touch either because these are pulled from FPS Creator. Ambient ambi color here is your uh, ambient light color. That's automatically pulled from FPS Creator. Surf color is um, your light color in FPS Creator, the lights you place in your level. And let me just say one thing. You don't have to touch this either because this is automatically pulled from FPS Creator. But let's just alter this for fun. Right now, this assumes that the model is um, under a bright light. Let's tone this way down. Let's say this is in a dark area of your uh, map. So let's lower this value to like 0.2. And you'll see the TV itself gets darker, but the animation still plays at full brightness, just like a uh, television screen would, which is really neat. So in addition to playing the sprite animation, it also works as a self-illumination map, which is really neat for um, doing things in a dark room. All right, let's uh, raise this back up here. Now, let me just show you some other things we can do with this. Um, like I said, you have full control over the animation.